I thought I would share a few thoughts on the two different ways that Create Studio lets us add animations to text, characters, um, assets, and shapes, and anything that you want to do. I'm going to, I always say I'm going to keep this short. I really just want to not go into a whole lot of depth. I thought I would share a few things that I do, and I am sure that there are a thousand other ways and to think about these and to use these. But I think one of the main, main things I think of is our motion presets. So if I click on it, those are right up here. We can do it by position, scale, fading, rotation, skew, distort, and then there's some saved ones that you can save on your own just by clicking the star. Um, or I personally have never saved anything, but these must be from different scenes and templates that I have used so I get the benefit of what Create Studio has created. And you can change it from the in animation, the out animation, and I really like the loop. So the loop is something that I find really helpful. Then we also have custom animations. And here you can do it by position scale, opacity, rotation, you can do color fill, border, shadow, arc, text, spacing, tiles, distortion, and of course, when we have a character, you would see character view as the last option with all of the easings that you can do in and out, in only, or out only. You can also do some of those, you can change some of those with the motion, this one right here is a motion preset and you can tell because it's a big bar, the custom animations are keyframes. And if I click on that bar, this opens up that for the text, I can do it by a paragraph, by a word or by a letter. I can make it go forward, reverse or random. You can change the letter offset, the positioning, whether you're going to use fade or not. You can Choose your easing in the same way, in and out, in only, or out only. And you also have a advanced settings that then you can change all of these positions. I'm not going to get into all of that. I think one of the main things that I see as the difference and when I use them is when you're using the motion presets. Let's go back to that you're really limited to in and out. So if you want to do any animation that isn't at the beginning or the end, you really need to use a custom animation. That doesn't mean that you can't use motion animation for the beginning and the end, and then use a custom animation in the middle. But if you want to have a series of animations within a text or a character or an element, you do need to use the custom animations. I often use, one of the choices I make is I use motion preset for text. I like the text ones. So, well, they're actually going to say what they are. So let's see what this looks like. They both have the same general action, right? They're, they're scaling in, in reverse. I have the text going in reverse. I can change the letter offset if I want. And the same is the true of the motion. If I click on the motion, um, sorry, I just did the motion. The same is true of the custom. I can do it forward, reverse, random, by letter, word, etc. And that's just by clicking on text. A little T at the end there, and the, it says letter there. I like the motion ones, and then I really do like the loops 
because you can have the letter swing and they can swing by the word. I don't use that too much. I often use letter. Now I don't like this. Oh, well, that actually could be kind of fun, I think. You could find something fun with that. Or you can do it by the y-axis. So you can make it wiggly. You also can do scale by going in and out. Out and in. You can do X only or Y only or opposite. And I haven't been changing it to um, letter, but I often like to do the letter, which I think is a good purpose of the loop. You could add a loop to the custom animation. You can also add it. I'm going to just copy and paste. That is another benefit of the motion animations is you can just copy and paste. So I can copy and paste the beginning. I'm going to do Command C. Let's see what happens when I have one there. Then I can copy paste it. Yeah, I'm not sure that that really worked because it already had an animation on it. But you can copy paste if I put another text on here. I can just copy it and paste any of the motion animations or the loops. So any of these you could do. You can't copy and paste custom animations. I wish we could, but we can't. So for text, I often use the motion. Then we look at a character. And so I have the grandma walking in. And this one is the motion, the preset motion. And the one on the left is the custom. I don't know. I always tend to use the custom for walking. And for the character animations, that's just a pers personal preference, but um, they kind of look the same in the end. Now, the main thing, one of the main benefits of the custom animations is you can add multiple animations. So here I have position, just like the preset motion is position from the left. So they both have a position animation. But I can add multiple animations to a single set of keyframes with the custom animations. So I can do position and scale. I can even have a rotate a little bit if I want. So let's see. Right now they're just walking in. But say I want grandma to also get bigger and do a little rotation. Whoops, sorry, grab the wrong one. And I want her to do a little rotation as she's doing that. I wouldn't, but because I chose that, I'm going to do that. So here she comes, and clearly she's not one of our um, 3D character creators, so the rotation isn't going to look that good because she's not a true 3D character. She's a movie file. But I can't make Grandma do anything else here except the position. I can't have her get larger in scale. If I try to increase her size, it's just going to make her a larger Grandma from the beginning. So. I think that's why I tend to go with the custom animation a lot is because I tend to do multiple, um, I don't like that rotation, I tend to do multiple animations at the same time. You can change the opacity with the position and the scale if you then want her to fade out a little bit. You can have her fade and be a mysterious character if you want her to do that. So 
motion animations, you're restricted to the beginning and the end, except for the loop. But with the custom animations, you're able to do it with in the middle. You can have a sequence of animations and you can add multiple animations to the same set of keyframes, which I find very valuable. And I didn't make any of these really, but you can do the same thing with shapes and any kind of, um, say we have any 3D um, items or objects, you can also Let's just get one of those. You are also able to animate those with custom or with motion. So I'm looking 11 minutes. I am not fast. I am never fast. So, but I think that is all. I think um, the one other difference that makes, that, that might make a difference is you can't save preset animations. I mean, sorry, custom animations. There's nowhere that you can save as a favorite, as I showed that you can do with the motion. You are able to favorite any of these by just clicking the little star. So if you want to have any of those saved, motion would be the choice. But as you can see, there is no way to save your custom animations. So maybe that showed you a few things that you can do with the two different options for animating your custom animations and your preset motion animations that you can always go in and just edit away by using fade, easing, and then you can change tons of different components of your animation. All right, have fun.